So hey, guess what? Just when you think Xiaomi has launched its final budget blower of the year, <laughs> oh boy were you wrong. It's already spaffed out some of my favourite budget smartphones of the year, including the Redmi Note 10 Pro, absolutely fantastic a blower, but now it's back again with the Redmi 10, one of the most budget friendly efforts of the year so far, 179 euros, so it'll probably be about 170-ish quid here in the UK. And as usual, a canny bit of hardware for that budget price, so let's whip the Redmi 10 on out of the box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what is actually in the box besides of course that Redmi 10? Well you get a big old beefy power adapter. You probably won't be able to guess what this is. The obligatory quick start guide. And yes Xiaomi has continued its trend of bundling a condom case with its budget phones. And that's your lot, so now the star attraction, the Redmi 10. And I gotta say it may be made of plastic but that is one attractive rear end. So the choice of plastic for that back end, pretty standard for budget smartphones around this sort of price point. It is a glossy finish here on the Xiaomi Redmi 10. And yes, it does seem to pick up uh, greasy prints and scuffs and dust rather easily. Got a choice of three colors on the Redmi 10, gray, white, or this rather stunning blue model. It's uh, kind of a gradient style finish, more blue down towards the bottom and then sort of clearer up top. You've got this lovely rainbow reflection uh, shining off the surface as well when it catches the light. Very jolly. Indeed, and then if you flip the Redmi 10 over, you've got a Gorilla Glass 3 display. It's actually got a pre-installed screen protector on as well, so it's doubly protected from scratches and scuffs. Not the skinniest bezels around, but again, pretty standard for this budget price point. You've got that centrally positioned selfie cam, and then the engine is constructed, of course, from plastic once again. And 181 grams, the Xiaomi Redmi 10 is reasonably lightweight as well. Gotta say, I do like the design of it, despite the fact you've got that smudgy plastic around back. It looks very smart indeed, just gotta give it the occasional buffing up. And while the Redmi 10 doesn't have an official IP rating for splash resistance or anything like that, unlike some rivals like Motorola smartphones at this price point, uh, it seems absolutely fine just getting a little bit moist as long as you dry it off fairly quick. And if we poke open the Redmi 10's SIM tray, You'll see that not only do you have space for two SIMs at the same time, you've also got a separate slot for your micro SD memory cards to expand that storage. Okay, so it's time to get this more for all set up and check out the rest of the hardware and that software. So Redmi 10 set up, good to go, and as usual, it's your standard Android 11 uh, with a good bit of Xiaomi's own MIUI 12 launcher slathered lovingly on top. And if you're watching uh, this video, chances are you've got a vague idea at the very least of what MIUI is all about. But essentially, you've got a vaguely stock Android feel these days, like the Google Discover feed, present and correct apps tray by default. You can drag down that notifications bar, all the usual Google apps and widgets and all of that good stuff, but also lots of MIUI 12 bonus bits included for instance, the control panel completely shamelessly nicked off of iOS, but fast access to all of your main toggles and everything else you need. You've got face recognition support to back up this edge mounted fingerprint sensor, and it's reasonably nippy and seems to recognize me in even fairly dodgy lighting conditions. But that edge mounted fingerprint sensor also works an absolute charm, as you can see there, nice and nippy and responsive again, even uh, with fairly dry chapped fingers as mine are at the moment from sanitizing about a thousand times a day. Got lots of nifty gesture controls as well for the fast load naps and the like. One of my personal MIUI favorite features is the video toolbox, which allows you to, for instance, uh, stream a YouTube video with the screen hibernating so you can just listen to an audio book or a podcast that's on there. But dun dun dun, MIUI isn't all that in a bag of cheesy chips because there's plenty of annoying little irritations such as the sheer amount of crap where you get shoved on every single Xiaomi smartphone. Block puzzle game, be gone. Jules blast, Soji right off. Tile fun, the uh, just piss off, all right? And on and on it goes, TikTok and all this other sh**. But touch wood, I've been playing with the Redmi 10 for a few hours now and I haven't noticed any sort of little quirky bugs or irksome behavior. However, while you do have NFC, I believe in some regions with the Redmi 10, I uh, don't appear to have it on this model uh, right here. I'm certainly not seeing it in any of the settings or the toggles. No wars on the storage front though, because you've got 128 gigs. I believe you can pick it up in a 64 gig flavor as well. And of course that is expandable via micro SD. Now the 6.5 inch IPS display seems pretty solid for this sort of price point. It is a budget panel, of course, that is fairly 
obvious, but at least it's a full HD plus panel saw. The resolution, pretty sharp, keeps those visuals nice and crisp, some fine detail in there when you're browsing your photos and everything. Colors are pretty punchy as usual, uh, despite the fact it's an IPS and not an AMOLED, and you can play around with the color scheme as well uh, to sort of tone down the visuals if you like and change the color temperature. The viewing angles admittedly aren't fantastic. The image clarity starts to break up once you tilt the screen away from your face or watching something side by side with another fellow human being might be a bit tricky. But on that top brightness, certainly uh, when you're using the Redmi 10 outdoors, the clarity stays strong. However, while on top brightness, that screen is absolutely great for outdoors use. I have found that the Redmi 10's auto brightness functionality not exactly fantastic. I've been using the Redmi 10 as my full-time phone for three days now and several times already I've had to manually tweak the brightness because either it's been a little bit too dim while I've been outdoors, I couldn't quite see what I was doing, otherwise it's been too bright in the evenings and really burning my retinas. And that is a problem I've had with several other budget Xiaomi smartphones as well, so it's not a massive shocker. And while it's stuck at 60Hz refresh by default, you can bump that up to 90Hz if you like. And according to Xiaomi, it is a variable refresh, so it can uh, dip down to 45Hz when the display is not really doing much to conserve battery power. Now let's shift on to the audio, and it's a stereo speaker set up here on the Xiaomi Redmi 10, and both of those speakers are actually mounted on the edge of the device. Is the audio quality actually any good? Let's see. And one that I definitely feel is well worth celebrating in the obligatory traditional British manner of drinking alcohol until I can no longer feel feelings. And it's okay for a budget phone, to be perfectly honest. Uh, this top speaker definitely doesn't output at the same sort of level of performance as the bottom speaker. It's quite tinny uh, and uh, quite quiet by comparison. Top volume, you know, it should be absolutely fine in a fairly noisy environment. Clarity is not fantastic, but, you know, it's good enough. The main thing is that you've actually got a headphone jack here on the side of the Redmi 10, so you can jack in when you want to listen to some music. You've got Bluetooth 5 support as well. Now, performance and running the Redmi 10 is the MediaTek Helio G88 chipset, uh, backed by either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM. It's pretty much the only smartphone around right now that's actually using the G88. And it's most definitely a basic chipset, that's for damn sure. But so far, touch wood, everyday life seems to be absolutely fine, despite the MIUI launcher being slathered on top of Android. That said, the Geekbench scores are certainly quite low compared with uh, a lot of rivals, like, for instance, the Nokia G50 and fellow Xiaomi uh, handsets like the Redmi Note 10S. But of course, at this sort of price, you can't expect the moon on a stick. And if you just want to do a bit of web browsing, message and media streaming should do the job. And now, because I'm always curious as to how uh, these smartphones perform with uh, a good bit of gaming action, I'm going to get my ass handed to me by a bunch of 12 year olds on Call of Duty. And unsurprisingly, those graphic settings are rather limited here on uh, the Redmi 10. As you can see there, the highest you can bump, the graphics quality is medium, and then high for the frame rate. And yeah, the good news is that despite the fact that you are quite limited on the performance front, this 6 gig of RAM model absolutely blares through Call of Duty Mobile. No worries, the frame rate stayed pretty consistent even when I bumped up to that mighty medium uh, graphics detail setting. Throughout the match that I played, I certainly didn't notice any, you know, serious judders or stumbles that would have impacted the gameplay and given me even less of a chance than I already have with my booze-addled reactions and knackered old arthritic hands. The screen is nice and responsive as well, so no issues on that front. So yeah, certainly if you want to do just a bit of light gaming on Call of Duty, PUBG, etc., no worries. Oh, and the phone didn't even begin to heat up uh, after 10 minutes of gaming either, so no worries there. That's not really a surprise as the MediaTek Helio G88 is supposed to be pretty energy efficient. And energy efficient, this smartphone certainly is as well. It's got a 5000 milliamp capacity battery, so pretty spacious to begin with. But even then, I was still impressed with what I saw. Some days I was finishing with around 40 to 50% battery life still remaining. And that's with a good bit of media streaming, plenty of messaging, bit of camera play, all that good stuff. Even with a lot of Skyping and some really heavy usage I still found I had at least 25 to 30 percent by the time I staggered to bed. So even the most demanding of users should be more than satisfied by the Xiaomi Redmi 10 while just more casual users should be able to get two full days of use between charges. Although the uh, fast charging is only 18 watts so not particularly fast at all you will have to basically plug it in for a good couple of hours to get close to full. Bear in mind also that the MediaTek Helio G88 chipset does not have a built-in 5G modem, so no 5G support here on the Redmi 10. If you want that, you'll have to look at some of Xiaomi's other smartphones. They generally have 5G in the name uh, to kind of give you a bit of a helping hand. Otherwise, there's the likes of the Nokia G50, which just launched as well. Now, last up for this Xiaomi Redmi 10 unboxing before I go and drown myself in a bathtub full of beer, let's have a look at the camera tech. And what we've got here is a quad lens setup. 
And this is spearheaded by a 50 megapixel primary camera sensor. The Xiaomi camera UI will look very, very familiar if you've used a Xiaomi smartphone in recent times. You can quickly and easily jump between that 50 meg primary sensor and the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter, like so. And yeah, you've got Xiaomi's usual AI shenanigans on here as well, but I tend to leave that switched off as I find that the results tend to be a bit artificial uh, with that turned on. As I mentioned before, I've been using the Xiaomi Redmi 10 for a few days now, and I'm definitely impressed by the camera. It's a solid budget shooter, capturing respectable amounts of detail in every shot. And then the sensor is definitely perturbed by stronger lights. You will find the occasional saturated pick when you're shooting outdoors. And in more ambient light, there is blurring with some very mobile subjects, but otherwise my test photos all came out well, and it's exactly what I would expect from a budget smartphone. The Redmi 10's night mode doesn't really do much at all. You get a slight boost in brightness, but no greater clarity. As for the ultra wide angle shooter, well that's fine for getting a different view of the action and it even works reasonably well in lower light. The final two lenses here on the Xiaomi Redmi 10, don't get too excited because it's a 2 megapixel depth sensor and a 2 megapixel macro lens, uh, so yeah, if you want to you can uh, dive in and get a really up close personal shot with uh, with whatever. And you've got all of the usual uh, bonus bits on here, of course portrait mode which can add a bokeh style uh, background effect which you can tweak. There's a pro mode where you can piddle about with the various camera settings, you can also shoot at the maximum 50 megapixel resolution if you like. There is also a dedicated 50 megapixel mode here in the more section and uh, the usual night mode, slow motion, time lapse, all of that good stuff. And if you do want to shoot a bit of video with your disembodied mannequin head, well, the Redmi 10 is rather limited, as you can see there. Tops off at Full HD at 30 frames per second. There's no 60 FPS option. There's certainly no 4K. It's uh, one of the limitations, unfortunately, of that Helio G88. And last up, if you want to take selfies, well, there is a selfie cam, and it's absolutely fine. Again, as long as you're not trying to shoot against a bright sky or do anything uh, remarkably silly like that, then you'll get respectable enough results. And there you have it, my pretties. That, in a nutshell, is the Xiaomi Redmi 10 budget smartphone. As I say, it should be hit in Europe imminently for around €179. Euros. So it doesn't seem to bring anything particularly new or fresh to the budget smartphone mix, but it's a solid enough all-rounder. Decent enough camera tech, respectable performance, strong battery life, a good enough display. You've got the headphone jack, the expandable storage, uh, no 5G is one of the only complaints. So what do you guys reckon? It'd be great to hear your own thoughts on the Xiaomi Redmi 10 down below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. A bathtub of beer awaits me, so I will bugger off now. Love you!